I'm going to show you today how to take time off work, how to take a vacation, either in the summer or at Christmas, how to take your holiday time off. And believe it or not, it's a bit of an art to do this. And I've been working on this with the CEOs that I've worked with, and I've got some criteria to help you. So I'm going to go over it with you so you can enjoy the time you've got away, enjoy the time with your family and not worry that you might be missing something or something's going on, going wrong in your absence or you're a blocker or there's challenges with the fact that you are away. Now, there's some prerequisites to this. In fact, three prerequisites to doing this. The first and most important of all is you've really got to want to take the time off. You've got to want to not check your email. You've got to want to not check in. And the reason I say that is because there is a little dopamine here every time you check your email. There's a feeling of being wanted and needed every time you check your email when you're away. You, can't, you have to let that go. If you want to take time off, you have to let that go. You either take time off if you don't. The worst position to be in is the halfway between both because you neither enjoy your vacation as much and you're not doing the work you needed to be doing whilst you're present at work. So switch off that. Switch in your mind. Take the time off. The second point then is you need to set and remove and replace expectations with agreements. What do I mean by that? Expectations are things like, well, of course the boss will be checking his email while, she, while he's away. Of course Jane's going to call us to check in to make sure that we're doing what we need to be doing. You're not going to do that, right? You need to have agreements with the team about exactly what you will and you won't do. There's nothing out there in the land of expectation because that's dangerous because there People will be expecting you to do something. You may not do it. You may do it. They won't know. And the same with the team on the other way. Your expectations of the team and their performance need to shift while you're away. You need to create agreements. And that's what I'll go through in a minute is a list of steps to make that agreement. And the third thing is you need to put the work in. This doesn't suddenly happen. You can't do this on the Friday before you, due to go away on vacation, you need to spend at least the first, the week beforehand doing this stuff. You can share this video with your team as well to help them understand, because certainly if you're taking time away, it's Christmas holidays, vacation in the summer, some of your key team are as well, and they can learn from this video too. This is a team effort to make sure everybody has a great time while you, the boss, are away and whilst your team are maybe away at the same time as well. All right, let's go through it. So the week before then, what you need to do is you need to obviously let all your direct reports know you're, you're going to be away and tell them what that means right? That you won't be checking your email, that you won't be checking Slack. That, you know, you're not going to spend time checking in. That's not going to happen. All right. That's the agreement. Of course, emergencies and challenges are going to happen, but you need to set the exact criteria for that down to the level of detail, right? Um, you need to say what subjects or projects you're allowed, people are allowed to contact you about, right? Firstly, the subject. Okay. And then within that, you need to set the triggers that, that can cause this to happen, right? Maybe the contract on the Bishop acquisition isn't signed by the 22nd. You need to know that, right? Because then you need to do something about it. Okay. If, if it's signed by the 22nd, maybe that's not a trigger for you. Maybe you don't want to be known about that. You only want to be told if it's not signed, right? But that is a specific project, a specific trigger. You don't need to know the ins and outs and be imparted to all things in terms of the Bishop acquisition. You don't. You just need certain triggers to be activated that people can contact you. Then you need to set the channels under which that they can contact you, right? And those channels are not email. They are not Slack. They are not Teams. They are not the usual channels. People have to put the effort in to contact you. That can be a text message. That can be a WhatsApp. That can be Signal. That can be a private messaging service, right? But that has to come through a private thing that has no noise associated with it, all right? If you're getting 50 things through on this one WhatsApp channel and one of those is important, you're going to miss it and you're going to feel anxious and want to be checking that thing for the emergency stuff, right? If that email is going to come through, you're going to be checking your email all the time and going through all the noise of other emails to find that stuff that's there, that needle in a haystack. You don't want that to happen, okay? It's a private channel, ideally with just one or two individuals, right? It's maybe two or three individuals have a private channel to get to you, again, about specific projects and specific triggers, and they can only contact you in those circumstances, all right? And you have to trust them in terms of doing that. If they're not contacting you, that means all is well. And that's in the agreement, right? If something's not well and it sits outside of the triggers and certain projects, hey, what's the criteria for them contacting you? How does that work? All right. No check-ins is the next rule, right? No check-ins with people. You don't need check-ins because again, what people will do then is save everything up, 
for that check-in and they'll go through loads of stuff. They go, oh, I need to speak to the boss about this, this. They'll give you loads of bumps you don't need to worry about, right? Avoid check-ins if at all possible. If there's an urgent project or project that's dang- you know, needs your attention while you're away, have a check-in. Have a set time for that check-in with a set person, a set criteria, a set agenda, right? You don't want that going on for two hours. You don't want to go into the meeting. You want somebody to be in that meeting on your behalf and give you the praise of what happened, right? You need to take the time away and need the rigor to do this stuff. Also then while you're away, um, you need to prepare, before the, sorry, the week before you're away, you need to also prepare your team for what happens when you get back. You would like, and say to them, you'd like on the morning of your return by 8 a.m., they can send this the day before, that's absolutely fine. You need a pre-see of what's happened, right? What of relevance has happened in the projects that you talked about, okay? Which, what's happened with them over the time? What decisions have been made? What is outstanding? And most important of all, for each of those things, exactly what they need from you. And you'll see why that becomes relevant when we talk about your return afterwards, okay? Now, if your team are taking time off as well, like your direct reports are as well, okay? Ask them to do this as well from their direct reports. Send them this video, tell them to do the same thing. They want stuff to be filtered up to them while they're away. You know, there are people manning the ship while you're away. There are people working when this is happening. These reports need to filter up so they get to you. So when you go back to work on that Monday morning at 8 a.m., you've got what you need, okay? And they've got what they need as well to be able to talk to you. Bonus thing, which I'll share in the video description down here, up in the corner there, is closing loops. What loops need to be closed Who's got responsible for closing loops while you're away? That's another video that I'll share down there as well. But it's an important concept that can help with this, right? Now, if all that sounds like a lot of work, it is a lot of work. But your future self when you're away on holiday and vacation will absolutely thank you for it because you can relax. The whole goal of this is that you relax and don't worry about what's not or what is happening without you, okay? Channels are open if they need to be about specific things and specific triggers. If not, it's saved for your return. All right, while you're away then, point two, don't check email. Don't check Slack. Don't just check in. I'm just going to check in and see what's going on. Don't. You don't need to. You might think you need to, and that's a different thing, right? You might just want to have there to keep up to date, just to know so when I get back, things are not difficult. Don't forget, your reports are going to write you that status update to tell you what's going on. You don't need to check in. If you're worried you're going to get 2,000 emails by the time you get in, well, you know, ask your assistant. What's the agreement with your assistant when you get back? What emails do you want to have in your inbox? How do you want that to be? All right. If you're worried about a large load of inbox, you know, take an hour on the morning of your return to go through your inbox. Okay. Block that out in your diary. But don't do it while you're away. And that's the most important thing that can happen because this is a habit. And if people know you're checking in, that's going to break the agreements we've talked about earlier on. They'll know that and they'll have an expectation you're going to see things if they CC you on an email. That can't be the case. You can't let anybody know that that might happen and you can't let that happen as well. And more than anything else, you're going to upset your partner and your family because you're breaking the agreement with them, with them that you're going to be away on vacation, right? Don't do it. If you do have to have these arranged check-ins, my number one tip to you while you're away set an agreement with your partner and your family about exactly when that check-in will be, how long it will take. You say it's going to be an hour, keep it at an hour, don't let it move to three, when that's going to happen and how that's going to happen. So you can take yourself away and do that, right? If you wake up in the morning and say, oh, by the way, I've got a check-in at 11, that's not going to go down very well because the expectation is you're on vacation, that you don't have to do any work. Set an agreement with your family before you go about what check-ins you will be doing. But my number one piece of advice is you don't need to. If that sounds hard, this stuff takes practice. Honestly, you'll get there. Okay, when you return then, don't put anything in your diary until 11.30 a.m., right? Even if you have a regular Monday morning status update meeting, don't let it happen, right? You're the boss. You decide when these things happen. Don't let it happen. Or it happens without you. You know, however you want to do it, I'd say don't let it happen. It's the best thing to do because you're going to be tempted to go into it. Don't let it happen. Nothing in your diary till 11.30. You get into work. Maybe you get in at 8 a.m. because you want to be there and you go through the status updates, right? Those are the things you touch first. You don't touch the rest of your email. You go through those status updates. Anything that needs to be actioned immediately, you action. Then if you've got time to go through your emails, by all means do that. And if you, honestly, if you're going through your own emails, let's talk about you getting an assistant and how that should never have to happen for you, right? Go through that stuff, but go through those status updates. That's going to give you all of the stuff you need to know when you get back. 
Now, again, before you go, you've got to get these status updates right so you can enjoy that time away. You're seeing the importance of them now because effectively what you're doing is pushing all of that responsibility for what you're going to do next till after your vacation, which is absolutely the way it should be, right? You should enjoy that first morning up to 11.30. Get yourself a nice coffee, right? Don't overburden yourself on that first day. And then in the afternoon, yeah, you do need to set up some stuff, right? Keep a couple of hours free in case you need to do some emergency setups, you know, emergency catch-ups with people based on those status updates if you feel that's going to be the case. But put a couple in late afternoon of key people you need to speak to to warm up to get back into the game again. And then the day after, be that a Tuesday, that's when you're properly back in the game again. Don't have an expectation that Monday morning at 8am you're going to hit the ground running at full pelt because you're not. Okay, set an agreement with yourself that by the Tuesday or the second day you're back, that's the day you're going to be effective. Because honestly, most of us are much better at Tuesdays than we are at Mondays for that exact reason. All right. Don't put that pressure on yourself to be amazing on day one. Day one is all about getting back up to speed again. Give yourself that time. Again, you're the boss. You should do this. You can do this. Now, you're probably thinking, well, this sounds all well and good, Joe, but what if something really goes wrong? I'm just really worried that something's going to go wrong. Something will go wrong. Something will not, something will happen that you are not happy about. That maybe if you've been around, maybe it wouldn't have happened. But almost certainly it won't be something urgent or threatening or really dangerous. It might be something that irks you or annoys you or upsets you. And you think, well, if I, I could have done that. Let that go. It will happen. These things do happen. That's the whole point of being away, right? And do you know what happens when you get back? You're going to be a little bit more relaxed anyway. So it won't be as significant as you might think it might be there will be things that happen, right? There always will be in any organization. You've got to let that go. What you do is you write it down. Well, here's what happened. Here's how I'm going to mitigate that next time. You write yourself a little note. You file it away. You set yourself a reminder two weeks before your next vacation. Get that reminder out and you, and you see, well, this is what happened last time. This is what went wrong. How can I mitigate that? And all you need to up do, is, do is update the agreements that we created in part one of this to help you enjoy the next vacation. Okay. Don't beat yourself up about it. That's the whole key. Thank you very much. Now the key to this is rigor and you absolutely wanting to take time away from the office without checking in. Okay. You have to want to do those things and to know in yourself that it's addictive to check in. It's addictive to check email. It's addictive to check Slack and Teams, right? You're going to be pulled to do that in the quiet moments. So when you're away, make sure you've got something that's going to stop that addiction. When you spot it in yourself so you know what to do in that situation. All right. Good luck. I would love to know how you get on throughout this. Send me some comments down below. Let me know. Send me an email. I'd love to know how you got on with this. And if you've got any other tips about taking vacation time, properly taking vacation time, leave those down there. Thanks again for your time and enjoy that vacation. You deserve it.